Hello everyone, I'm Lotto Fong and my name is Danish Oh and, and we, we are from SMK Pusat Bandar Puchong Satu. We'll be participating in the Parasite Science Show competition and we will going to let you all understand about some physics and chemistry. I'm going to win this round. Let's try and see. <laughs> Never mind. You lose! I'm going to destroy this ball. No, my ball! Take that! Fine! Never mind, I will return this ball into its original shape. I'm going to return this ball back into its original shape by putting it into the hot boiling hot water. Yeah, we have Look at that! It just turned back into its original shape. Magic, right? It's fitting. Okay, the reason why the ping pong ball is able to inflate back into its original shape is because of this Charles law. Charles law states that volume is directly proportional to the temperature. So, as the temperature increases, the volume increases as well. So, just imagine this is our ping pong ball. As the temperature increases, the gas molecules in the ping pong ball gain more kinetic energy, causing the rate of collision increases. So, when the gas molecule collides against the wall of ping pong ball more frequently, the ping pong ball will eventually inflate back into its original shape. We're going to do an experiment about the relationship between surface area and pressure. The materials are thumbnails and balloons. First, we will use one thumbnail for smaller surface area to pop the balloon. Let's poke it. Wow! Alright. Next, I'll be using 30 thumbnails for a larger surface area. I put the thumbnails on a cardboard to make it all even. Now, let's press this balloon against the nails. Wow, why it doesn't pop? Well, let us explain. What is pressure? Pressure is the force that is acting perpendicularly to a surface per unit area. The formula of the pressure is force over area. Why my balloon did not burst? Well, as I used a lot of thumbnails which increased the surface area, as you all know, when the surface area increased, the pressure would decrease. In this situation, the pressure which is acting on the balloon would decrease. So, my balloon did not burst. So, when the area increase, the pressure decrease. Why my balloon burst? It's because I use only one thumbnail for smaller surface area. So the pressure acting on the balloon is high. So the balloon will eventually burst. Dennis, let's drink chandu. Yeah, drinking chandu is so nice after such a tiring day. I agree. It's weird, Dennis. Why is there water droplets in the store? Oh, let me explain. This is because of water surface tension. How does it work? Well, let's do an experiment to find out. I'm going to make an experiment about water surface tension. The materials are 
paper clip, water and some detergent. First, normally insert a paper clip into the water. As you expect, the paper clip will sink because it is denser than water. But next, let's try to make the paper clip float on the surface of water by bending the paper clip like this and put another paper clip on top of it. Do it slow and steadily. Now you can see the paper clip is floating on the surface of the water. Next, to make it sink, apply some detergent onto this cotton bud and touch the surface of the water. As you can see, the paper clip has sink. Surface tension can be defined as the property of matter which the free space at the liquid at rest acts like a stretch elastic membrane having contractive tendencies. Surface tension is caused by the intermolecular attractions between the water molecules. So, because of this, the paper clip is able to float. But if we use detergent as a surfactant to break the surface tension by breaking the intermolecular attractions between the water molecules, the bond will break and the paper clip will sink. I'm so tired. Yeah, I wish I can change this water into Coca Cola. Hey, I think I know a chemical reaction similar like that. Yeah, I'm too. I think it's the iodine clock reaction. Let's do it. Let's do it. First, we will prepare Baker Air. Put in 10 ml of diluted sulfuric acid. And then put in 10 ml of 3% hydrogen peroxide. And now for Baker B, pour in 10 ml of 0.3 mol potassium iodide. Next, pour 10 ml of 0.001 mol of sodium thiosulfate solution. And finally, Pour 10 ml of starch solution into the beaker. Next, pour both beakers A and B into beaker C. And now, we have to mix the mixture to see the reaction. Then is how long must we wait? I don't know. I'm tired. Let's wait and see. Wow! Look at that! How, how is this possible? It just turned into blue bear. Wow, it worked! So, this is the iodine clock reaction. Iodine clock reaction times how long it takes for a fixed amount of thiosulfate ion. It is also the time taken for iodide ions to reach a fixed number of molecules produced in the reaction between potassium iodide and an oxidizing agent, which is hydrogen peroxide. And this is our ionic equation in this experiment. My materials in Baker Air are hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid. The, beakers, the, the materials in Beaker B are starch solution, sodium thiosulfate and potassium iodide. And these solutions mix together from colorless solutions to be turned into blue-black solutions. Like this!